Sherry and Samantha came to live with me a year ago. A couple more bites for you, too. Their mother, my daughter, couldn't care for them any longer because of her own problems with addiction and the law. So, I brought them to live with All me. All right, girls, come on. Time to get ready. You gotta get going. And, while it's been a challenge, I wouldn't have it any other way. Now that Sherry is entering kindergarten in three months, I need to find out how I can enroll her in school. I've heard about guardianship, but I need to find out more about it. This video is to help caregivers better understand some alternatives to guardianship, as well as the process and steps required to be appointed a child's legal guardian in probate court. If a child is a dependent of the juvenile court, then you must seek separate information for juvenile court guardianship. What I'm learning about being a caregiver the second time around is that it's important to get support and information because raising children is hard no matter how much you love them. And it's especially difficult if you're a single caregiver like me because my husband is deceased. There are lots of places to find help. Libraries, grandparent support groups, community centers, your local church or temple. With the children in Story Hour, Gladys and I use the store computer for a small fee. The Judicial Council website is a very helpful place to start to gather information. Their section on Guardianship of Children in Probate Court helps you learn about guardianship and alternatives. Here we are at the Self-Help Center for the Judicial Council. Okay, great. Should be great information in there. Ah, there we go. What okay. is a guardianship? Okay. 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 Guardianship is a court process by which a person other than a parent is given custody of a child or authority over a child's property. Appointment as a guardian requires the filing of a petition and approval by the court. To be appointed a guardian, you must be at least 18 years old and you must have filed, petitioned, and be approved by the court. Hmm. Well, that sounds like me. <laughs> yes, and actually a relative or non-relative could file for a petition for guardianship in the probate court. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that a court investigator would meet with a relative, mm -hmm. whereas um, a representative of the Child Protective Services would meet with a non-relative like me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember that meeting with CPS really well. And that was the day that Will decided to fall off of his bike. Girl, I remember know. that big old egg on his head and the bruise? I don't know why he had to wait until that morning to fall off that bike. <laughs> but you know, I'm just glad they believed you. Well, me too. <laughs> oh, but well. before you file for a petition for guardianship, you should check out your alternatives. You can make a private, written, or verbal agreement with the parents, where the parents agree that you have physical custody of the children. But this does not create a custody order that would allow you to legally enroll the children in school or authorize hospitalization or treatment in medical emergencies and parents may choose to end a private agreement at any time. Here's the caregiver's authorization affidavit. The California Family Code allows a person who is related to a child to fill out a caregiver's authorization affidavit. The affidavit normally allows that person, as a caregiver, to enroll the child in school and secure medical treatment for the child. Hmm, that sounds good. Yes, it does, but read further. The parents may revoke this authority or override the caregiver's decision under this agreement at any time. And the caregiver's authorization affidavit is valid for just a year. The power of attorney is useful if the proposed guardian lives out of state and wants temporary authorization from the parents. But the parents may revoke the power of attorney at any time. Gladys. Now you know my daughter's troubles. I want to be able to protect my grandkids and keep them in my custody. With the guardianship, your daughter would still have her parental rights, even when you're appointed legal guardian. But your grandchildren would be in your care, custody, and control until they reach the age of 18, or until the court decides otherwise. 
What do you like to Rose's daughter can petition the court in the future to give her back custody of the children. But the court will determine what is in the best interest of the children. After looking over the alternatives, I decided that my grandchildren needed a probate guardianship. Gladys, um, you had a special guardianship before you became legal guardian over Will and Brandon, didn't you? Oh, yes, that was a temporary guardianship. I filed for it at the same time I filed for the general guardianship. When you go to the court clerk to get the necessary papers to fill out and file for general guardianship, you may also purchase a packet of documents for temporary guardianship. You type or neatly print the information into the forms and make two copies of everything. Check with the court clerk regarding alternatives to a temporary guardianship. Get a date for an emergency hearing. Fill out and file the documents and include the hearing date for the ex parte hearing. You must serve notice in person to the parents. Propose ward if 12 or older and any person having a valid visitation order with the ward. If you are unable to serve notice, you must complete a declaration stating why notice could not be given and all the specific attempts you made trying to give notice. You must also complete an order dispensing with notice for the judge's signature. Then there's a court hearing. A temporary guardianship normally lasts 30 days or until such time as the judge determines. Girl, I wish I could package some of that energy and use it for when they're too tired to take their baths at night. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> but remember, my situation with Will and Brandon was an emergency. They had been abandoned. Both parents were gone, and Brandon needed emergency hospitalization. I ran around like crazy, filed the documents, served the, any relatives that I could find, had a hearing, and got my temporary guardianship all within six days or so. And I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting appointed a general guardianship would take about 60 days. So you have enough time before Sherry has to be enrolled in school? Hmm, I don't know. Not that much time. Sherry? Samantha? Yes. Gladys, girl, I really got to go because I need to get to the courthouse today. Oh, I know, but don't forget to get the general guardianship of the person. Right. I'm going to fill out the forms for the guardianship of the person only, not the estate, because neither one of the kids has any property or income. Yes, and just remember, you don't have to do it alone. I'll help you. Girl, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Appreciate it all. The first step in becoming appointed a guardian is to fill out a petition and other documents and file these with the court clerk. Keep in mind that the guardianship process costs money even if you present your own case without a lawyer. Right away, there's a fee for getting the petition and other documents to fill out. Check with your local superior court to find out the exact fees. And if you are low income, you may qualify for a fee waiver. Ask the court clerk to give you a fee Hi, waiver application. Um, I would like to file for guardianship for both of my grandchildren. Okay, great. We have packets available for you. And they are $18. Okay, let's see. There you go. Let me get some change for you. There's the change. Thanks. Okay. This is the general guardianship of person and estate packet and it contains all the forms that you'll need to fill out and file for the general guardianship of okay. the grandkids. Okay? For instance, this is the petition for appointment of guardian of a minor or minors, which in your case will be minors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I can fill out both of my grandchildren's names on one petition? Oh, sure. Great. Oh, sure. Okay. And then if you need some additional room, you can just attach an additional piece of paper to the back of the petition. Next is the confidential guardian screening form. You can see that it asks some pretty detailed questions. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a little time and concentration to fill them out. Also, the court wants you to bring back the original and two copies of each form. 
Okay, so then I fill out each different form and make copies. That's correct. Okay. Some courts even provide additional copies in the packet in case you make a mistake. Great. Okay. okay? But what right. we'd like is for you to bring back your form, mm -hmm. attach your two copies mm -hmm. to a form like this with a paper clip. So when you return to court with your forms, it'll look like this. You fill out the following. Petition for appointment of guardian, confidential guardian screening form, the duties of guardian, consent of guardian nomination and waiver, order appointing investigator, declaration under Uniform Child Custody, Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act, the notice of hearing for guardianship, the order dispensing with notice, the court investigator's information and referral form, the order appointing guardian of minor, the letters of guardianship, and the questionnaires or releases in the packet. I want to point out that this form, inventory and appraisal, mm -hmm. is filled out for guardianship of estate only. Will you be petitioning for guardianship of the person and of the estate? No, ma'am. Uh, just guardianship of the person. Okay. If you have questions about this, the duties of guardian form outlines the different responsibilities of both guardianship of the person and guardianship of the estate. Do you need to file for temporary guardianship also? No, thank you. Okay. But before you fill out your forms, I'd recommend you pick up a copy of the Guardianship Book for California. Mm -hmm. It's published by NOLA Press. I've got one right here to show you. Oh, great. You'll find okay. it very helpful in filling out your forms. Okay. Would you like to, me to jot that down for you? Yeah, I really sure. would. Thank you. Sure. You know, we can't give you legal advice, but we'd like to help you find good resources to give you some guidance. Okay. Well, here we go. The forms do take time to complete, and when you fill them out, keep in mind that you, the proposed guardian, are listed as the petitioner. The child is listed as the minor or ward. On your mark, get set, go. I'm writing my first copy in pencil so I can erase my mistakes. Then I'll type or neatly print a clean form when I know all the answers. For instance, I don't know where the father of my grandchildren lives. Sherry, has your mama moved? I don't know, Grandma. I don't even know where my little daughter is. Grandma, are we going to live for forever? <laughs> well, baby, nothing is forever. But I am going to try to see if you guys can stay with me until you're 18, okay? Okay. I'm making two copies of everything. Both of the copies are stamped, endorsed filed, or conformed copy. One of these copies goes to the court investigator. The other copy is returned to me. The endorsed filed copy is very important. It should be kept in a safe place because you will use this packet to make copies for service. Be prepared. The guardianship process costs money. There is a fee to file the papers with the court, and it's best to check with the court clerk in your county regarding the exact amount. You have to pay this fee when you file the petition. There is also a fee for the court investigation. Check with your local court for the amount. And again, if you are in a fixed or low income, Check with the court clerk to see if you qualify for a fee waiver. And you know what? Let's go ahead and schedule your guardianship okay. hearing. Okay, great. All right. Let's see what we have available. It's going to be about 60 days out. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay. And it looks like we could probably, um, that's what we're looking at, July 31st. Great. 8.30 a.m.? Sounds That sounds good. okay for yeah. you? Yeah. All right. I'll go ahead and write that down. Okay, now where do I go? All of our courtrooms are upstairs on the third floor. Great. Very easy to find. All right. So far, the guardianship process is straightforward, but now comes the part called service. Service means that you inform all the relatives within the second degree of the minor that you are petitioning for guardianship.
Second-degree relatives include the minor's parents, maternal and paternal grandparents, and the minor's siblings if they're 12 or older. All right. I think we've got everything filed for you. Okay. Now you want to make copies of the petition and the notice of hearing okay. to serve on the relatives within the second degree. If they sign the consent form, you won't have to serve them notice. Okay. But if they don't sign that consent form, you will be required to serve notice. Mm, okay. Great. You will serve these papers on the minor, if he or she is 12 or older, both parents of the minor, the maternal and paternal grandparents of the minor, the minor's spouse, if married, and the minor's siblings, if they are 12 or older. The minor, if 12 or older, and the minor's parents, must be personally served. Other relatives, however, may be served by mail or by personal service. There may also be certain agencies that have to be served notice. So you might want to check with that guardianship book just to verify it. Gosh, I can see why you have to begin the service ASAP. <laughs> yes, because you want to give the people you serve at least 15 days notice before mm. the hearing. Okay. And you want to file your proof of service before the hearing also. Otherwise, your hearing date will be continued to a, a later date. Mm. All right. If you cannot locate someone, then you must bring in a completed due diligence declaration okay. as to why notice could not be served and a completed order dispensing with notice okay. to the clerk here in the courthouse before the hearing date. Okay. Okay. The judge will have to sign that order before your hearing. Wait a minute. You lost me. Oh. <laughs> I know it's a lot of information. Yeah. You know what? Maybe this will help outline what I just told you. Oh. Okay. And then check with your guardianship book. Great. Yeah. All right. All right. You'll be fine. <gasps> I decide to buy the Guardianship Book of California because I know that I will want to write notes in it. But it's also in most libraries to check out. Ah, oh, there, there it is. is. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, Gladys, am I going to have a whole lot of people I'm going to have to serve? No, I only count four people to be served. That's your daughter, Lavana. Okay. The children's father, Parnell, yeah. and his parents, which are the paternal grandparents. Mm, okay, so that's four copies of the petition and notice of hearing to make. And then I'm going to have to go and visit Lavana and see if I can get her to sign the consent form. That's a good idea because it would be easier on you if she does sign it. Yeah, okay. This leaves serving the father, Parnell, and his parents. My daughter, Lavana, did sign the consent form but she didn't know where the father of her children lived. She also didn't know where his parents were. Bubble gum, bubble gum, in a dish. How many pieces, you mean pieces do you wish? To find relatives, right, one you. obvious place to look is in the phone All book. All right, well, I've got a, a number for Tracy. That's Parnell's sister, so she may know where he's at. Good, okay. Checking with other relatives is often the fastest way to reach someone. Hello. Hi, uh, is this Tracy Ward? All right, this is Rose Williams. Um, I need to contact Parnell. I'm, yes, um, I am going to have to file for custody of the children. Yeah, it's going to have to happen. And I was just wondering if you might know where he's located? No? All right, well, how about uh, your dad? Okay, you do have that. All right. Oh, and one more thing, what about your mother? All right, well, I'm sorry to hear that. While Tracy did not right, know where well, her brother so or father much, were, she knew where her father right. used to work. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, well, I've got an old work address for uh, Parnell's dad, and she said that her mother passed away two years ago. Oh, so we can write that in the grid. Yeah. Another way to find relatives is to check with former employers. This employer gives Gladys an address for the grandfather. You, the petitioner, cannot personally serve notice on anyone. You must get someone who is not involved in the guardianship process, like a friend who is over 18, or a sheriff, or a professional process server. We decided to personally serve the grandfather because we did not want the service papers to get lost in the mail or delayed. Gladys brought along a friend. Yes. Oh, hi. Are you Jerry Ward? Yes, I, I am. 
Well, I have some papers here to serve you on behalf of Rose Williams. She's petitioning the courts for guardianship of her grandchildren, Samantha and Sherry. Do you by any chance know where your son Parnell is currently living? No, I don't. Uh, I have an old address. Is it possible that I could get that? Well, wait a minute. Thank you. If you are ever in doubt about your safety when serving someone, get a sheriff or professional process server. Do not put yourself in an unsafe situation. This is, uh, this is about a year old. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. And do you know if Parnell ever served in the military? No. No? He did not. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. The server must keep track of who they served, their correct address, and the time of service. Later on, the server will type or print this information into a form called Proof of Personal Service or Proof of Service by Mail. These forms must be completed for each person served. Since the old address for the father, Parnell, is in Fort Worth, Texas, I'm going to pay for a professional process server in Fort Worth to personally serve Parnell. I am also going to have the service documents mailed to Parnell. These include a consent form, which I'll ask Parnell to sign and return to me. I'm enclosing a stamped, oh, self-addressed envelope, which he can use. For Parnell Ward in Fort Worth, Dallas, or Houston. <sighs> Okie dokie. Well, okay. Maybe the process server can find it. Maybe. Well, here we go. Okay. So we'll mail it and see if we can get lucky. Again, Might the petitioner well. in a guardianship cannot serve anyone. The server must be over 18, not be involved in the guardianship, and must live or work in the city where the mailing occurs. If, after diligently searching for missing relatives, you can't locate them, you fill out a form called a due diligence declaration. You must fill out a form for each missing relative. So I think we're done with our service part. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're All done right. with that. <laughs> when you've completed the service part of the guardianship process, you make copies of all proofs of service, the due diligence declaration, and the order dispensing with notice forms. Always make extra copies. You then file all the original service documents and the due diligence declaration. You also submit the order dispensing with notice for the judge's signature. These well, must morning. be filed at Hi. least five days before the court hearing. Here okay, let's see what we have. Oh, proof of service by mail, mm -hmm. your proof of personal service, a due diligence declaration, mm -hmm. and your order dispensing with notice. Yeah. Wonderful. It'll just take a few minutes. Okay. I'll go ahead and file these for you. Oh. Now the order dispensing with notice will be sent upstairs to the judge for signature. And right. these are your copies okay. of the documents. All right. All That's right. it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Another part of the guardianship process involves a home visit by a court investigator. Oh, I see you. I <laughs> <laughs> looks like a person with a dress on. I Since I am a relative of the minors, I will meet with a probate court okay. investigator. You make one too? The court investigator wants to ensure that the home is suitable for my grandchildren, the minors, and that the relationship between me, the proposed guardian, and my grandchildren is good. The investigator will also address any concerns that may come up in a background check on me. The court requires a home visit to protect the child or children. My husband passed away about five years ago, right around when Samantha was born. And I've been involved with the grandkids ever since, especially once it became obvious that my daughter couldn't care for them herself. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Would During you the interview, you, right? you talk about why you are stepping in to be appointed guardian you, and how you plan to care for the children. Okay, 
And what grade are you in? When the investigation is complete, the court investigator writes and files a report for the court recommending whether or not the guardianship should be granted. It is nerve-wracking, no two ways about it. But if you try to relax and understand that you both want what's best for the children, then it's not so intimidating. So it sounds like you and Grandma do lots of good things together. Yeah. You like being with Grandma, huh? Yeah. Yeah. The last part of the process is the court hearing and many courts tell you not to bring children to the hearing. Remember to bring to court any notes you've prepared for the guardianship proceeding, copies of all guardianship papers you filed with the court, copies of all proofs of service, an extra copy of the unsigned letters of guardianship, an extra copy of the proposed order appointing guardian of minor, and copies of court documents affecting the minor. During the hearing, the judge will ask how you plan to handle the duties of guardianship. This can, in some cases, include the estate of the minor. And if there is an estate, it is best to hire a lawyer. Managing someone else's money is complicated, and there can be severe penalties I'm if you make a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and grant a for guardianship. Please take it down to the clerk's office to be filed. Thank you, Your Honor. Before you leave the courtroom, make sure you take the original signed order appointing guardian and the original letters of guardianship. Oh my gosh, Hi. I went through. Oh, oh yeah, I know this isn't protocol, but can I shake your oh, hand? Oh gosh. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm thank happy you, thank for you, you, thank you so much. Oh, oh this it's is just wonderful. It Judge just worked signed out. it? Yes, and Everything. he was awesome. Thank yes. you so much. Great. You will need to file the order appointing guardian and have the clerk issue the letters of guardianship. This is the court document that confirms your authority to act as guardian. That's your order in your letters, and you're on your way. If you want certified copies of the letters of guardianship and the order appointing guardian, you may have to pay a fee. Check with your local court clerk. It took 70 days to be appointed legal guardian for Sherry and Samantha. Sherry's now enrolled in kindergarten, and I'm glad that my daughter did not fight the guardianship, as it would have taken longer and maybe even gone to a court trial. While raising children is a lot of work, I'm very happy I chose to become a guardian. However, your situation may require you make other choices. Whatever you do choose, remember that there is information and support out there to help you.